All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about my cityscape painting process. Yesterday I did a 20 by 20 inch Alla Prima oil painting of a cafe at dusk, and I fully planned to make a video, like a process video, um, and I did film the sketch portion, but once I finished the sketch, I realized it, this was gonna be a long painting process, and it took five hours. So there was no way I was gonna be able to film that. I did take photographs along the way and I'm gonna to talk to you guys about you know, my process and what I was thinking about uh, during each step. Um, and so we're gonna sort of piece this thing together here. Uh, but let's first start off with the actual photograph that I worked from. I've had this photograph around for about four years. I've painted from it before. In fact, not that long ago, I did a video where I did an eight by eight painting from this photograph, and I will link that either here or here if you want to check it out. Um, I really simplified that painting because it was so small, like I left out the car, and what else? I think I left out the street lamp, you know, the post for the street lamp and the traffic light. Just really simplified it and focused on the light in the cafe. On this particular painting, because it was a 20 by 20, I felt like I could include some of those other details, like the car, like the lamp, uh, the street lamp. All right, so there are a few things I'm gonna change here. Um, there is a flag hanging uh, in front of the building. That's sort of confusing. I'm gonna eliminate that. Uh, the crosswalk, I don't like the, the all those parallel lines, creates a lot of energy at the bottom of the painting, draws the eye too much. So I'm gonna use like simple, you know, typical crosswalk lines. I am going to eliminate the street light post that is kind of obscuring the yellow portion of the window there. Um, it's the one over to the right and it's got the red light. I am gonna change the green light on the post to the left. I'm gonna change that to red because I do wanna get that bit of red in there. Fire escape, I'm kind of on the fence about that. Uh, in the final painting, it's sort of sketched in. I may leave it that way, but maybe I'll eliminate it, we'll see. But let's get right into the sketch process, which you guys have seen before. But the sketch process is done in burnt sienna and I am just um, trying to map out the big shapes first before I, you know, add any sort of detail. Like say for the car, I've just kind of blocked out the outline. And once I feel like all the major um, shapes are in place, then I can start putting in the windows, uh, maybe add a little bit more detail to the car and uh, also like say the furniture in the front of the cafe. I don't wanna get into like sketching those things out until the big shapes are in place. And uh, so that's, that's basically what this process, oh and then also yeah, putting the figure in. I decided to leave the figure in the painting as well. Here is a look at the final sketch. Definitely very loose, um, but this is all I need. You know, this is all I need. The next step is gonna be um, mixing up some alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue and just mapping out the darkest darks. So by just starting with my darkest darks, you can already see the composition is interesting, I think, um, and it's solid and I can move on from here. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to cover the rest of the panel um, with approximate colors. So that's the next step. Uh, and I'm just thinning the paint with odorless mineral spirits and I'm just um, scrubbing it in. Uh, I'm not using medium at this point, uh, just scrubbing in those approximate colors. And this is a picture of the, the finished product um, or more or less finished. It's where I'm gonna leave it for a couple days and then I'll do some touch-ups. What I did here was uh, I reinforced the darks using a mixture of ultramarine and um, burnt sienna, that's my darkest dark. Um, so I came in first, like say around, uh, especially the car, uh, the windows, the figure, um, and then uh, like the furniture out in front of the cafe. Those were things that I, you know, I came in and I reinforced those darks first uh, so that I could keep things like the street dark and still have the, uh, the appropriate relationship, value relationship between say the wheel of the car and the street. I mean, you'll notice like the street over to the right is actually really dark. And then basically I just started working dark to light 
Uh, and then when I did put the light in, uh, you know, the, uh, around the cafe there, all that yellow, I tried to put that paint in really thick because um, you know, the thicker the paint is, the brighter it seems. So whenever I'm painting a light source, I will always paint it uh, with really, I'll load the brush and I'll paint it with really thick paint. Fire escape is just sort of suggested. In real life, um, that portion where the fire escape is is much darker. Uh, it kind of, for some reason, the value, uh, it, the photograph lightened the value. So in real life, I, I kind of like that it's just suggested back there. Um, if I painted it out, it would almost, maybe there'd be a lack of detail, too much of a lack of detail in that area. Uh, what else? I might reinforce some of the darks along the front of the building, which would make the lights pop a little bit more. I also may add a little bit more paint to some of the lighted areas, although to be honest, I think it looks pretty good. One thing I will say is, uh, uh, if you look at the car, the car looks like it's fairly realistically painted, but basically, if you look close, it's an abstracted, it's very abstracted. The thing that defines it are the highlights. Also, you can see down the street too, a lot of those buildings were just very abstracted. But once you put the lights in there, um, and also along the cars that are along the street, you put those lights in there and then it just, you know, it starts looking like cars. All right, so that's kind of the process. Let's take a look at the palette that I used. Uh, all right, so starting from the right, we have a cool yellow, which is cadmium yellow lemon, titanium white, cadmium yellow medium. This is uh, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, cad red light. I've got some permanent rose from Windsor & Newton here but also alizarin crimson, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, and then thalo blue. And this is my typical um, palette. This is like all the colors. Occasionally I'll put out Viridian if I'm doing a seascape, but basically I had all the colors out for this. Um, and the main reason is I wanted a variety of yellows uh, just because there was a lot of light in this painting. Also too, I wanted to have the permanent rose. This is super strong tinting. Um, and let's see if I can show you what I mean here. This um, very strong pink, and uh, that actually can act as a light, uh, light source too. I mean, especially if you add a little bit of yellow to it and white. You can see how strong that uh, that pigment is compared to say a alizarin crimson uh, and I don't know if this is going to work but it's a dirtier it's a little bit duller of a red sometimes just a little bit of this permanent rose with white can act like a nice uh, you know a, a nice warm white like this was used in the I use this in the crosswalk I believe all right, hope you guys enjoyed seeing my process here. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, again, I didn't want to, I realize this is like not your typical video, but I want to talk to you guys about this and share these, uh, share this process with you. And like I said, it just was, it just was a long day. It was a long day. Uh, but ultimately I'm happy with the results. And like I said, I'm going to live with it for a little bit. I'll, you know, kind of do a few touch-ups and then it's out the door probably in a week or so. Anyway, as usual, thanks for hanging out, guys. Oh, if you'd like to help support the channel, keep these videos coming. I got a Patreon link down below. There's a bunch of videos on that channel as well. Uh, little shorty videos and, you know, talking about art ideas and, and that sort of thing. And it really helps out a lot. So um, anyway, take a look at that if you're interested. Uh, stay creative and we'll see you guys in the next video.